So now the national uh, debt for the UK is sitting at around an inconceivable 2.5 trillion pounds, increasing by 382 million pounds per day. Well, I mean, that is. is inconceivable. Well, it's 2.5 <laughs> trillion. That's what a trillion looks like, Isn't by that... the way. I can't even count that high in terms of those number of digits that in is, a row. It's nauseating to it's look at that number. <laughs> 2 trillion 536 billion. And counting. 428 <laughs> million 574 thousand. Oh, no, now it's more. It's going up every blooming second. Well, it's, it's, it's almost impossible to comprehend, but to try and help us uh, work it all out is the group who have launched this tool, this clock, this national debt clock, the Taxpayers' Alliance. Here to help us break it all down is their head of campaigns, Elliot Keck. Elliot, I am transfixed <laughs> looking at this number. I mean, the, the amounts are just impossible to get your head around. Well, exactly. And thank you for having me on. You really can't look away. And the reason why you can't look away is it goes up every single second. It's completely without respite. And one of the things that really jumps out to me is that little ticker at the bottom, which shows exactly what that national debt could pay for. It could pay for the NHS's budget four time, 14 times over. So when we think about the consequences of politicians ignoring the public finances for not just years, but decades, the result is that there's a huge range of things that we'd love to pay for, a huge range of taxes that we'd love to cut that we can't as a result of this national debt. Well, it, it is extraordinary, again, just looking at it tick up and up and up. These are, these are real pounds and pennies. Well, it's not even pennies, it's just pounds, <laughs> just pounds. Um, but but you've, you've published some facts alongside this clock. Um, so uh, one, one of them, which is extraordinary, is the national debt is uh, around 45 times the annual defence budget. Well, it, exactly. And, you know, the Labour government have just come in and they've all these things that they'd love to spend money on. Think of uh, things like the two child benefit cap, all of these different spending priorities. And ultimately, Rachel Reeves has made the decision often correctly that she cannot pay for them. And that's because the result of the uh, national debt, something which actually is real pounds, is that we now spend over £100 billion a year in debt interest. For a long time, we thought that interest rates were never going to go up. And so we could just spend uh, as much as we wanted. We could have them one of the most uh, generous uh, public sector pension schemes in the world. We could have uh, a state pension that went, went up under a triple lock. We could uh, lock down the economy for 18 months and none of this would really matter because ultimately debt interest was manageable. That's no longer the case. Interest rates are heading up back to relatively historically normal levels and ultimately we are now paying for the consequences. Elliot, one of the other facts um, that you've highlighted is that this could fully fund the NHS for 14 years. How does this square with the decision by the Labour government to fork out more for public sector salaries and also potentially, as the um, Adam Smith Institute has pointed out, that their VAT raid on schools may actually end up costing the taxpayer more money? How, how are Labour squaring this? Well, I think ultimately they're doing what every government before them have done, which is ultimately to pretend that these figures don't actually exist and ultimately they're going to find the money from somewhere. We know that Labour and the public sector are incredibly close. We know that Labour um, normally does prioritise the public sector and so they are taking that massive democratic mandate that they have and using it to pay public sector workers more. But the reality is for taxpayers is that public sector workers get better pay, pensions and perks and those in the private sector and it's of course private sector taxpayers that are going to end up paying for that and it's all of us that will end up paying for the national debt. Mm. Now Elliot, I, I was trying to get my head around these numbers, millions, billions, trillions. Um, I, I, I found that if you put, if you count these in seconds, a million seconds is 12 days. A billion seconds, and this is quite hard to comprehend, right? So 12 <laughs> I'm days, trying to stay with you, 12 <laughs> days is a million seconds. A billion seconds is 31 years. And a trillion seconds is 31,688 <laughs> years. So even though million, billion, trillion, they all sort of sound just like vast numbers, Putting it like that, the difference between a million and a trillion is 12 days to over 31,000 years. I mean, these are unquantifiably large numbers, Elliot. 
Well, exactly. And that's the reason why underneath that headline figure, we have the amount that is going up per second, per hour and per day. The per second rate, £4,000, something that I think most people can comprehend. £4,000 is quite a lot of money for most people. But you know, for most people, £4,000 is something that they will spend regularly over certain periods of time. But to think that the national debt is going up by £4,000 per second, I mean, that really is uh, quite extraordinary. And it ends up with these numbers that, I mean, frankly, if I tried to read out that number, we'd, we, you know, we'd, you'd get to the top of the hour and I'd bit barely even be finished. Goodness me. Well, Elliot Keck, thank you so much for talking us through uh, your new campaign, your new national debt clock. Just lastly, where can people find it online? So it's at taxpayersalliance.com slash debt clock or debts clock.org. Brilliant stuff. Elliot, thank you so much for joining us. Blimey, that is unsustainable. Crazy.